Hi, this is Dr. David Brown, and this podcast is part of an online class I'm teaching at Pellissippi State Community College. It's called CSIT 1110. It's an introduction to information technology. The part of this week's assignment is to use an assembly language simulator that I wrote for the class. And what I'd like to do in this podcast is basically orient you to this simulator and show you how to use it. So if you go into the online materials and click on this link, you see the simulator. And what I'm going to do here is just kind of show you um, what the various parts of the simulator are and how you should look at those as you uh, run it. This part right here is supposed to be the inside of the CPU. And what you see here is some parts of the uh, the registers. The ALU, there's nothing really going on here. It's just to show you that that is part of the CPU. The ALU is the part that actually performs the instructions. So the instructions are actually performed in this part. The control unit, which is another part of the CPU, has two internal registers. The program counter basically keeps track of what instruction you're currently executing. So this one will show you where you are in the program. The program itself goes in here, in RAM, and it's executed out of RAM. That's random access memory. This instruction register here, the, the IR or instruction register, will have the currently executing instruction. So whatever instruction is in this location that's pointed to by the program counter will be put into here to show that that's the instruction that's about to be executed. I'm, I'm going to skip down here and, and talk a little bit about this for just a second. We'll move back through the other parts. Down here shows the small assembly language that uh, you can use with this simulator. And I'm going to talk about each of these instructions in part of this podcast. But what you do is you take instructions from here. Uh, you put these into the assembly language code section. So you write instructions here. Uh, you press this button to say assemble that and these instructions are translated into machine code. Machine code as we've looked at earlier is binary and the binary code is what the machine actually knows how to execute. So we're going to write in statements that are human readable but they'll be translated into machine code. Uh, how you interact with the machine is through these buttons here. This button right here says to load whatever machine code you've produced from the assembly code into a certain address, usually zero. So what it'll do is take this machine code and put it up here into RAM for you to work with, to execute. So you write the program here, translate it, and then tell it to load it into RAM so you can then uh, step through it uh, with these buttons. Now the reset just resets all the computer to zero so that's a good way to start everything off it doesn't erase your assembly code so you can reset the machine and then reload this uh, the step button will walk through your program one one step at a time so it'll it'll walk through one uh, one statement at a time and then come up and show you the results of that statement the run button will just run all of the program until it it encounters a stop statement which is how the program sent so these are the buttons you'll use to control the machine. I have detailed instructions included um, in the material for the class that's located here. There's instructions for using the machine. I'm going to walk through and show you a couple of simple programs that should help you get prepared to do the assignment for the week. So let's start with read and write. What I'm going to do here is just write a simple program using the simula simulator that just uses those statements. So let's let's start off by just resetting the computer. We're going to reset everything to zero, and I'm going to put in two statements: read 15 and write 15, and then stop. So I'm going to actually use three statements. This read 15 means read something from the user, the person who's running the program. That'll be me, and put it into location 15, which is location 15 is this RAM address. You can see RAM, we've only got 16 locations of RAM and they're numbered 0 through 15. So this one says read something and put it here. And this one says write out whatever is in there and the last one just says stop. So what this program should do is ask me for a number and then write that number out and then stop. So let's let's load it and run it. So I'm going to first assemble it. It's converted into machine code. Read is an 001. Write is 010. 
you can kind of see how these are being converted into machine code. There's more detailed information about that in the D2L material, but here's the three instructions in machine code. Now I'm going to load this up into RAM to run it. So I'm going to load it and there's the machine code copied up here into RAM. The program counter is set to start at this location. So it's going to start with the read instructions. So when I step, it should read something for me and put it down here. So let's watch and see if it does that. Okay. It tells me to put in a number. Well, I'm going to put in a small number so we can see this. I'm going to put in a three. Watch location 15. We told it to put it there. It puts the binary number three into location 15. Okay. So now the program counter is updated. We're now on the second statement, which is a write. It says write out whatever is in location 15. So let's step that. It outputs a three and we can see that. These two areas over here that I didn't really talk about earlier, they show any inputs that you put in. They just show what you've put into the program. And this one shows anything that's been output. So anytime there's a read, it also shows it here just as a help so that you can see what you've input and output from the program. Now the program counter is pointing at the stop statement. And so the next thing we should do if we step, the program is over. The program is ended. So now that was a complete program. We stepped it through every phase and you saw three statements. Let me, let me add a couple more here. The add and subtract work the both, both the same way. So what I'm going to do is just do one of those. To use add or subtract, you also have to use load and store. Load and store are used. Load brings a number in from RAM into a register. Store takes something from a register and moves it back to RAM. And you'll notice here on the add, add will add something in a memory address to something in a register. So one of the things already has to be in a register to use this. So th this is a really primitive machine and all it can do, if you want to add something, one of the operands has to be in one of these locations and one of them is going to be over here. So if I wanted to re add two things, like let's say I wanted to read in two numbers and add those two numbers together. Let's see, first I'll have to load one of those into a register to add to it. So I'm going to load the first one into register one and then add what was in location 14 to that and then store the result back out and I'll store it back out over the first one that we read in and then write that out. So this little program reads in two things, loads one of those up here so that we can add the other one to it, um, stores, I forgot to tell it that it needs to store out the register back out here. So the load brings something in to a register, store sends it back out. And uh, then after the value's been stored, the sum, write out that sum. So again, let's reset the computer to get everything uh, re reset. Uh, assemble the program into machine code. Uh, load that into RAM. You see it's copied up into RAM and then just step through it. So I'm going to again put in a 3 that should go into location 15. We see that. Step again. I'm going to put a 4 and that should go into location 14. That was the next one. Next statement says take what's in 15 here and put it into register 1. So it copies what was in 15 up here. That was this statement. Load 15 into R1. Add 14 to that. It should add a 4 to this. So register 1 should change. Now it's 7. It's going to store that back out now. Next statement says store it back out over the top of this one. So it did. Now we've got a 7 there. And this says write out the result. It's going to write out uh, I reloaded that. That doesn't matter. I'm going to step. And we see the output, uh, which is 7. Okay. So what we've seen here is a little program that will read into numbers, add those together, and print out the result. And I've demonstrated all of the instructions except for sub, I guess this value one, and jump. So subtract works the same way. I don't really think I need to say anything else about that. It works just like an add. One of the operands has to be in a register before you can use it. Uh, the value one, uh, I do want to say something about that. Let's say that I wanted to, instead of reading in two numbers, I only want to read in one. And what I want to do is, no matter what number you put in, I want to add one to it. I want to add, let's say you put in a three, I want to output four. Okay, just as a demonstration of how to use the value statement. So let's, let's see how to do that. I want to read in a number load that in here and then I want to add something else to it some some number here uh, a location that will have a one in it but I want to show you how I'm going to do that 
store the result back out and then write it. Okay, I'm going to follow this right here with a value statement that has the one in it that I want to subtract. Now when I load this machine code into RAM, it's going to start being loaded at position zero. I'm going to go ahead and reset everything. But I'm going to load this machine code into zero. So this is going to be in location zero, right? That statement. This one would be at one. And then this one at this one here would be at location two. And then this one at three. This one at four, five, and six. So this statement right here, this value statement, is going to be at location six. And I'm going to use that information right here. So what I'm saying is load whatever is in location six. Again, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to load this value statement. And the value statement just basically stores whatever number is put here into its memory location. So let's assemble this. And see here where the value statement is? It actually puts a binary one there. If I put a different number, let's say five, and assemble it, it puts a five there. So here, when I'm saying added location six, it'll be whatever value I put there. So here, assemble. Okay, so now this one will add one to whatever is input. And again, I'll, I've assembled it, I'm gonna load it, and this time I'm just gonna run it instead of stepping through each step. So here it wants a number, I'm gonna put in a five, it should output a six, okay? Uh, you may look at these programs and say, why would you ever write a program to do anything like this? You wouldn't. <laughs> The, what I'm trying to demonstrate here is how the computer operates at a very low level. We're going to move up from this point on. We're going to talk about high level languages. We're going to talk about how we do really sophisticated things with the computer. But it's important to have a mental model for how a computer operates. And that's really what all of this is supposed to be. It's supposed to allow you, if someone asks you a question about how the computer works, if you have a model for how it works, you don't have to actually know the factual answer. You may be able to run your model and figure out what how that works without knowing the fact. So building up a model is really what a lot of the first part of the course here is about, about building up a low-level model for how the computer operates. I have one more statement I want to talk about, and then I'll, I'll end this podcast, but the jump statement. The jump statement is used to go back to a previous part of the program or to jump around a, a statement that you don't want executed. It's very primitive. Uh, it, here's how it works. I can modify this program here slightly to make it do... Uh, something more interesting. Let's see what I want to do. I want to replace with this with subtract. And I'm going to put a jump statement right here. And I'm going to say um, jump to location 2 on R1. And I'm going to have to change one thing here. I'm going to have to change this to be 7 since I added a statement. So let me explain what I'm trying to do here. Before we would, this program would read in a number, add one to it, and print out the result. What I'm trying to write a program to do here is let you put in a number, and then this program will print out every number below that all the way down to zero and then stop. Uh, what I've tried to do here is create a loop so that this says, okay, first we read in the number as before, load it into the register, subtract one from it, store it back out, and then write that. So if we put in a five, it would write out four initially. This one says if R1 has a zero in it, which in our case it didn't, it had a four in it. Um, if it has a zero in it, don't make this jump, but if it has anything besides zero, which this one has a four, it says go back to statement that's at location two, which would be that's in zero, so that we want two. So it would go back here to this one and subtract another one from R1, so it would make it three store that back out and write out the three. Again, R1 would be non-zero, so it would go back again and write out the two. Uh, go back again and write out the one. Go back again, write out the zero, but this time because R1 is zero, and you can say, see here, it says jumps to an address if that register is non-zero. Since it is zero, it would stop, and that, that's the end of it. Let's actually run this program quickly. I'm gonna reset the computer, and then load this, and tell it to run. It asks for a value. I'm going to put in five as before, and four, three, two, one, zero, and stop. Um, so that demonstrates how the jump statement can be used to go back to a previous part of the program. The jump actually modifies the program counter by setting it to a previous value, so it basically goes back to another part of the program. You can also set this to jump ahead 
to a, pre, uh, to a, a future statement, jump around some statements. This is how if statements and loops are done in high level languages at the lowest level of the computer. When a compiler translates those, it's going to translate it into jump and branch statements. Uh, you can see that this computer can't do very much. There's only 16 locations in RAM and that's the largest program you can write in this, including your data, uh, because you can't have program statements and data in the same locations. Uh, you can reuse things, but um, this, per, this computer is very limited, but like I said, what it's supposed to show you is uh, some of the ways the components operate, uh, what the basic statements are, uh, how assembly language and machine code are used, machine code being uh, generation one language, assembly code and generation two language. We're going to be using third generation and even fourth generation languages in this class. So this one is really supposed to provide you with a very low level model of the computer, and I hope it's done that. So that's really all I wanted to show in this podcast. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.